Hi everyone, it's Melissa and today I am doing the mid-year book freakout tag. This is a booktube tradition and a tag that I've been doing for, I don't know, the entirety of the length of my channel? I think so. I have done it at least a couple of times and I really like this kind of midpoint check-in, um, looking back on the books that I've read and looking forward to some things in the future. So um, I will leave the original creators and all that stuff down below, but without any more dilly-dallying, um, let's get into it. Number one is the best book you've read so far. So this was really hard because I've read a lot of really great non-fiction primarily. I've read a couple of good fiction as well, but... I have read many, many nonfiction books that I have absolutely loved. And it is going to be very, very hard for me at the end of the year when I try to rank them because right now they all kind of just occupy the space in my head of they were great. And so trying to rank my very favorite is really hard. So just know there are many other books that I've read that were absolutely like wonderful books, but for my favorite or the best of the year so far, I am going to go with Being Mortal by Atul Gawanda. And that's more so because um, on top of being very well written and very um, compelling and interesting, it's also one of those like uh, paradigm shifting kind of books, um, a book that uh, challenges you. It was just one of those books that I've I thought about for a long time and I am still thinking about and um, I would recommend it to pretty much everyone. It is just so great. Um, the next question, number two, is the best sequel you've read so far this year? And I don't think I've... Re oh no! I have read a sequel. I read Sorcery by... Um, Terry Pratchett. So this is the, what, fourth, I think? Or fifth, maybe. Maybe fifth. Yes, this is the fifth book in the Discworld series, which I, I guess counts as a sequel, even though they're all in the same world, but they're, for the most part, standalone books set on the Discworld. But um, if you want to count that as a sequel, that I think is the only sequel that I've read this year, and I enjoyed it as I do all of the Discworld books. Um, number three is a new release you haven't read yet but want to. And there's nothing kind of on my radar at this moment that is a new release that I want to read. The one that I wanted to get to was um, The Secrets of Heartwood Hall by Katie Lumsden um, from Books and Things. And um, because it's nice to support a fellow booktuber and um, a debut novel is a very exciting thing. Um, and I had pre-ordered that last fall or whenever the pre-order started. Um, and so I really wanted to get to that one, but I had read that one in April or May. Um, and there's nothing else kind of on my horizon of new releases that I want to get to. Number four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. And I normally don't have an answer for this because I don't typically keep up with new releases, but I definitely have an answer this year. And that is um, sometime in the fall or winter, um, Wab, Gashib's, Wab Gashib Rice is coming out with another book. Um, he wrote Moon of the Crested Snow, which I read a couple of years ago. It's a um, like apocalyptic fiction set in this remote northern indigenous community. Satellite phones go out, power goes out, like they don't really know what's happened because they're so remote they can't contact anybody and then all of a sudden a couple of people come into town on snowmobiles and basically say like um you know things in the city are bad like society has collapsed um and they're kind of in this sheltered spot but obviously people are going to want to um come join the community and like escape whatever's happening um further south so that was um, a great book. I really enjoyed that. And he is coming out with a second book called Moon of the Turning Leaves. So I am just so excited to 
read the next in that series if it's going to be a series or if this is just going to be like a second story set in that community. I, I don't know how directly linked it's going to be with the first book or not, but I, regardless, I loved the first book, so I will be picking that up sometime in the last half of the year, hopefully. Um, my biggest disappointment, number five is biggest disappointment, and that I just talked about in my um, June wrap-up, or will talk about my June wrap-up, I don't know which of these videos I'm going to put up first, that is You Died, an anthology of the afterlife, which is still sitting here because I've just filmed that other video, um, as edited by Andrea Purcell and Cal McDonald, and it's a, like, graphic, um, like a comic anthology of different stories of death and dying and the afterlife and mythology surrounding that and modern stories surrounding that. And I wanted to love that so much because I have an interest in um, death and mortality and ritual surrounding death and mythology and all that kind of stuff. And most of the stories in that were just nothing burgers. Um, there were a couple of standouts that I thought were were really um, cool or, you know, that tugged at my heartstrings or that um, said something, but most of the stories I didn't think said anything and were just kind of there. And yeah, so that was the biggest disappointment uh, for me. Number six, biggest surprise. And for this, I'm going to go with Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Um, I suspected that I would like this book. It's about... Um, a brujo who um, basically um, their job is to release uh, spirits into the afterlife. The main brujo is uh, a trans uh, teen boy and is not accepted as a brujo, um, not accepted because he is trans and not accepted as one of the boys basically because brujos are boys. And uh, this is a lot, of course, about, you know, gender roles and gender identity. And um, I suspected I would like it. It sounded really interesting. Um, it was about his, uh, I forget the protagonist's name now, but about his very first um, attempt at releasing a spirit. And it all kind of goes a little wrong. And he has kind of this, like, tag-along spirit that um, he needs to help with other earthly matters, basically. And it was so much better than I thought it would be. It, I found it quite emotional at the end. Um, I thought the, the teenagers were, um, realistic. I thought that the, like, miscommunic miscommunications and misunderstandings and that kind of thing were realistic was not annoying, which can sometimes happen with YA, at least for me at my age now. Um, but I also think that this book would speak to the intended audience as well. So I think it has like wide reaching appeal and um, it was very um, forward moving and compelling, but didn't neglect character development at all. So I think it was very well-rounded and yeah, that just really took me by surprise how much I enjoyed that book. Um, number seven is favorite new author. And I think I'm going to give this to Ed Young. Um, I read An Immense World about like animal senses and how different animals perceive the world. And it was just so well written. Besides being fascinating and all these interesting facts about how animals perceive the world, it was just so well written. And I know he's written um, other like popular science books, at least one, if not more. I am just very keen to pick up more by him. I think sometimes it's hard to say if they're a favorite new author if you've only read one of their books, but I don't typically read like more than one book by any author in the first six months of the year or like in a year in general. So um, going based off of the few books that I've read so far this year, we're going to say Ed Young is my favorite new author, new to me author. Um, number eight is Newest Fictional Crush. I don't really have one. Um, I haven't read any books where like that would make 
it easy to have a crush on any of the characters. Um, I've read a lot of nonfiction this year as well. Number nine is newest favorite character. And this one, I wasn't sure I had a favorite character, but if I, I had to pick one, I would probably go with the uncle in Greenwood. I think he was a very complex character and someone who it was easy to kind of like get behind. So I'm going to choose him. I can't remember his name. Everett, I think. Um, number 10 is Book That Made You Cry. Um, I've cried during several books this year, but I'm going to go with The Escape Artist. Um, I've forgotten the author's name. I'll make sure everything is listed below. The title's an author. This is a nonfiction um, history, like biography of uh, a man called Rudolf Verber, who escaped from Auschwitz. Auschwitz. I can't pronounce that word today. Escaped from the concentration camp. And um, it is a harrowing tale, uh, super uh, compelling, um, and I think was a good blend of like the biography of this man along with the history and context around what was um, going on. And um, of course, very difficult to read, um, hence the crying. Um, number 11 is book that made you happy. I don't really read many happy books, but um, one that I was just so excited to read and met my expectations was Stories of Your Life by um, uh, Ted Chiang. Um, I read his uh, collection Exhalation, which I loved. So I had very high expectations for this one. I also loved it. And um, while I wouldn't call any of the stories in there happy, um, reading it brought me a lot of joy because he writes the exact type of science fiction that I adore. Um, number 12, favorite book to film adapt adaptation you saw this year. I have seen none, so I don't have an answer for that. Number 13 is a favorite video you have done so far this year. I've made very few videos this year, not my normal amount. Um, just life changes and it has been very hard to find any sort of time to film. Um, I'm trying. I still enjoy doing this. I just, it's been hard. Um, so I don't have a lot to choose from, but I would say um, my standalone review of Greenwood, I thought that I um, articulated uh, well what I wanted to say about that book. Um, number 14 is the most beautiful book you've bought or received so far this year. Um, I don't buy or get many books. Um, so I only have a small, like a couple to choose from, but I'm going to go with, um, uh, Katie Lumsden's book, The Secrets of Hartwood Hall, because I appreciate it when the cover of a book gives you an indication of what that book's about, uh, the mood of the book, you know, I, I, get peeved when books are just pretty for pretty sake or I don't know when they don't really say anything about what the book's going to be like but when you look at the cover of this book um you know what you're getting and I appreciate that also I do think it is an attractive cover I like it I um I like the kind of like cut out silhouette so we're gonna go with that for the most beautiful book that I bought or received this year and the last question, number 15, is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Um, so uh, I'm currently judging around for the Booktube Prize, but I will be done that by the end of July. If I do the final round, then I'll have to read those. But aside from the Booktube Prize, um, there's nothing I am like obligated to read. I would like to get more of my own books read because I've been using the library a lot this year which is fine but I do have the goal of getting through my many many unread physical books so I would like to read the ones to get to my goal I can't even remember what my goal was I think my goal was to have a hundred unread books by the end of the year and I don't know what number I'm at right now but <laughs> however many I have left to go I would like to read those so that was my version of the mid-year book freakout tag. 
let me know your favorite book that you read this year, your most disappointed, all that stuff. I would love to hear about how your reading year is going. As always, thank you all for watching and we'll chat soon. Take care. Bye.